everything is well with you. I bring greetings from the U.S. and as you can see my t-shirt is in Russian. It says Christos Dolea Naroda, which is Christ for the nations. That's what we're talking about, Christ in all of the nations. For a few minutes I want to talk about David and Goliath. Very, very familiar to all of us. I am sure in 1 Samuel 13, 14, says David was a young man whose heart was after God. This is extremely important because our heart has to be after God a lot more than after the things of the world. Because I'm going to be very disappointed if, in fact, my heart is after the world. Seems that God often uses young people because they don't know that they cannot do something that God has told them to do. We older people, we get a little bit hard in our ways, and sometimes we have a hard time moving forward with what God has told us to do. My heart has to be very much like a young person. David was chosen among his brothers, which is an interesting story. One by one, they were brought to the prophet to see who the next king was going to be. No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. And after six brothers, they said, oh, there's one more. He's out uh, taking care of those sheep. He's a young man. I'm sure it's not him. And the prophet says, bring him in. He comes before the prophet and God speaks very clearly. This is the king. Now, David was doing what his father had told him to do. He knew exactly what his job was, just like us. We need to know what God has called us to do. And when none of his brothers were called or anointed, they didn't know what to do. But God still did. Here's a thought. David's father saw him as only a shepherd, but the prophet saw him as a king. David's father saw him in the field. The prophet saw him in the palace. His father saw him for what he was. The prophet saw him for what he could become. It just depends on our perspective. We need people in our life that will believe in us and see things in us maybe we can't even see in ourselves at times. Here is a very young man that nobody thought could possibly have any talents or gifts, but the prophet saw a king in him, just like God sees a king in you. You may not be uh, David or the, the king of a country, but you are the king of your household, your community, your country. And God wants us to act like we are a king. Who is it in our life that sees things in us that are positive, that believe in us, that will not give up on us? That's the kind of people I need to be around, ones that will encourage me and challenge me to be all that God wants me to be. Later on, there was a battle between Israel and the Philistines. The brothers went to fight and uh, uh, David's father called him in and says, I want you to go and see how the battle is going. So take some food and some wine and go out and check on your brothers to make sure that everything is okay. He went as his father told him. He came to where the battle was and he heard something very strange. He heard this loud voice saying, Send me somebody to fight with. I don't care who it is. And he said, who is that? Then he found his brothers. And his brothers said, why are you here? You're only here to be seen and, and to know what the battle is and to know what's going on. 
my thought is, what battle is that? There was no battle going on. Day after day, the two armies would line up on each side of the valley, and Goliath would come out and said, Somebody, please come and fight me. Send one representative so we can have a battle. If you win, we will serve you. If I win, you will serve us. David heard this day after day after day, and no one in the Israeli army said, Oh, King Saul, I will go fight. I will take up the sword. It will be about me. Now, there's something really interesting here. The, the ground or the land that Israel was on was owned by Israel. The valley in between was owned by Israel. Where the Philistines were on the other side was owned by Israel. My thought is, why is the enemy encroaching on the land that God has already given you? I find that very interesting. We often don't know what God has given us. Therefore, we're not willing to fight for what God has already given us. David could not believe what he was hearing. Not one person in the Israeli army would stand up and fight. Everybody was in fear. Every day when Goliath would come, all the armies of Israel would hide because of their fear. Wow, this is not good. But David said, Here am I, send me. This man is encroaching on what God has given us. I will fight him. Well, everybody looked at David, this young, skinny little boy, and said, who in the world is this boy? To think that he can fight this giant that's been a, a warrior for all of these years? He must be crazy. So I think it took a little while for David to actually convince Saul that he was willing and able to take on Goliath. But finally Saul said, okay, you can fight. But let me give you my armor. David put all his armor on. It was too big, didn't fit. He wasn't used to it. He wasn't accustomed to it. He said, Saul, I cannot do this. I am not accustomed to this. It's too big. It doesn't fit. Let me take it off and use what I knew in the past to work. Now, David had fought a lion and a bear in the past and had won both of them because they were trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And David said, you are not doing this on my watch. David said, let no man's heart fail. 1 Samuel chapter 17. The younger telling the older does not work sometimes, but we must listen to what the younger is saying, because God speaks to them just as much as he speaks to us. Well, I find it really interesting that David took this up. He gathered himself with the faith of God, knowing that God was going to do what he promised that he was going to do. My challenge is this. If we pray small prayers, then we believe we have a small God. If we pray medium prayers, we believe we have a medium-sized God. If we pray big prayers, we believe we have a big God. But this is what I am believing right now. We must pray impossible prayers so God can do the impossible. So God can begin to work miracles not only in our lives, but the lives of our communities, our states, our countries, and ultimately, the world. David took the challenge. He ran towards this giant. He ran towards the giant. He didn't walk. He knew what God was able to do. Therefore, he took the challenge. 
Now I'm going to do a part two on this the next time, but I'm going to stop right there and say, pray impossible prayers. God is for you and not against you. He's wanting to do miracles in your life. Let him do what he wants to do. Father, bless these people. In Jesus' name, I pray that they walk away encouraged and challenged to know that God is for us and not against us.